Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a quick look at this uh, dual boot Android hack on the Kobo Aura HD. Uh, it's got a different launcher and different look than the uh, Android setup on the Kobo Glow that I posted a video about earlier. Um, so this is the um, dual boot hack, like I said. So what's really cool about this is that you can either choose to boot this Android operating system or the Kobo operating system at boot, and it just all depends if you hold the front light or not. So if you hold the front light button while you turn it on, it will actually boot the Android. If you don't hold the Android button, then it'll just automatically go to the Kobo operating system. Now this doesn't work very well. This whole setup just doesn't work very well. But we get it, it got it going right now. It seems to be loading. Um, I've had a lot of issues with this Android on the Kobo Aura HD, and I definitely don't recommend it unless you are really tech savvy and you know what you're doing, you know how to like fix things that go wrong on Android. Uh, I've just been experiencing a lot of freeze ups, uh, a lot of apps uh, won't work. Um, right now I can't seem to download any more apps from Google Play that just keeps giving me an error every time. I'm not sure what the problem is. Uh, even apps that I know that install because I installed them before and then uninstalled them and it still gives me an error, it won't install them anymore so I don't know what the deal is. Uh, there's lots of bugs with this setup. Uh, definitely more of a fan of Android on the Nook Touch. It just runs a lot smoother. There's a lot more um, hacking been done to it to make it more optimized for e-ink, like there's a partial refresh mode and stuff. All right, so this thing should boot up immediately, or uh, eventually. Here we go, we finally got the home screen. Uh, like I said, it's a different look you see here than uh, on the Kobo Glow, the Android on the Kobo Glow I showed in an earlier video. We got a different launcher on here. Um, it's definitely easier to find your apps. Um, most of this stuff, uh, it was pre-installed. I installed all this uh, stuff on this upper level right here it's just to try out some different ebook apps, uh, Com Comixology, and Adobe Reader, uh, Kindle, uh, Overdrive, and Kobo. So these apps all actually function somewhat, but they don't function well. So just kind of one of the problems with this device. I'll show you in a second. Um, when I first started this thing up, it was all in a different language. So I had to come in here and figure out where the language input was and go into language and keyboard and then go up here and set the language to US. Uh, we've got this little icon up here, this is Button Savior, it's on the top instead of the bottom. And then you can access uh, Home and the menu in the back from there. You can also use the Backlight button to go uh, as a, a back button. Because that works as back. It doesn't actually turn the front light on and off anymore. You have to use the actual display like you would a tablet for uh, turning the front light brightness up and down and using this brightness slider. So I've had issues with the front light just stop working for some reason it'll go out and then I have to come and readjust it. I don't know, some apps seem to make it go haywire. Earlier at the device, the front light started flashing on and off constantly and uh, then it froze up and it said the battery was at zero but it was at 40% and then, I don't know, it took it a while and now it thinks the battery's at 49%. If I load the Kobo though, it'll say it's like at 80% so who knows what the battery is actually at. So like I said, yeah, there's a lot of bugs with this. It doesn't run great but it does have the Play Store and you can install apps theoretically but like I said, Anytime I try to install an app anymore, it just gives me an error, or a 921 error, so I'm not entirely certain what the problem is. Uh, I was able to install some of these apps, so like the Kindle app, for instance. Uh, it would be cool to be able to have your all your apps on one device. That's like the whole point of like hacking into e-reader to get other Android apps on there. But there's just something wrong with the app. It doesn't work right. So, I mean, it'll load the book fine after like 15 minutes. Okay, quite, not quite that long, but as you can see, it does take a long time to load. Um, everything is really slow with this device. You type in searches and it takes it several seconds before it actually works. So let's try to load a book here. I mean, tapping on it doesn't always work. Um, it might load here eventually. Okay, so here we go. This is the key problem with the Kindle app. Now I know that there's an, another older version of the Kindle app that's optimized for ink over at XDA, but I haven't bothered installing it because uh, I doubt it's going to work great either. So the problem is, is there's no way to adjust anything. Normally you tap in the center of the screen and it brings up this menu and it'll have like a menu icon right here and a font adjustment icon right there. As you can see there's nothing there and tapping there does nothing so I'm not exactly sure what the deal is. There's just like no way to access the settings. You hit the settings button on Button Savior, it'll actually bring up system settings and not settings for the actual book so I don't know what this is bringing up the... bringing that up for but... Usually it'll bring up a menu, but it's system settings, and you can't access the Kindle settings from in here, right here. So this is all system, home, back, and if I hit settings here, it'll take me actually to system settings, not the Kindle settings. So uh, again, not working too good. Um, I don't know why the keyboard won't go away now, but whatever. 
uh, let's go ahead and one app that kind of works okay is the Adobe Reader app because the Kobo device itself, you know, it doesn't have very good uh, PDF features. Let's see if we can get rid of this keyboard. Uh, so yeah, loading in the uh, Adobe Reader, it does have better PDF features. You're going to have to get used to the like awkward screen flashing though because it definitely isn't optimized for ink, but it does work. And all the settings options are accessible from up there and you can actually add notes and stuff if you like hold down on a word. So it does bring up your options right there. So as far as I can tell, the Adobe Reader is working okay and the pinch zooming does work. Uh, with the ink, it just the optimization isn't there, so there's lots of flashing, and sometimes it's kind of hard to get it to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, but yeah, as far as that goes, I mean, Adobe Reader does work okay. I mean, it's scrolling okay, and I actually left it off on the page I was at before, which is a plus. All right, some of the other apps I tried on here was Comicology, and now it seems to work okay. I mean, obviously. It's designed for tablets, so uh, the flashing is very excessive when you're paging forward. Let me go ahead and load up a book here. So yeah, Comixology, I mean, it does work. It's doing the guided view right now where it goes from pain to pain. I couldn't figure out how to turn that off, actually went into the settings and there wasn't an option for it. So the hidden settings menu option on this one actually brings up the settings for this particular app. Super, super slow and laggy. I guess you have to hit in the center of the screen. Oh yeah, that brings up the settings from over here. So there we go. I turned the animations off so it wouldn't flash so much. It didn't really seem to change anything though. But yeah, it does work. I mean, it actually works pretty good as far as comics go. I mean, that's turning pages faster than it turns a simple ebook page in other apps, which is kind of strange. So yeah, that that's one app that does seem to be working okay. Um, so like I said, these are all the pre-installed ones: the All Reader, Cool Reader, FB Reader, Moon Plus Reader, Ebook Droid, and Orion Viewer. This also has a couple web browsers installed. It's got the Dolphin web browser. Just go ahead and load something up. Like I said, it's not in English, it's Cyrillic, so it must be Russian or something. Um, <clears throat> I went ahead and changed the menus um, in the settings, then that changes the menus, but there's also German on here a lot, because this is based on the Tolino Shine firmware. A lot of the menus, like if you hold the power button right here, it's all in German, so you basically got to have like a translator to know what you're doing. Um, I basically figured out that's cancel, that's restart, and that's power off, so it just takes some trial and error as far as that goes. Let's hit cancel. So yeah, the web browsers do work. I was using the Opera web browser. It's on here as well. So you got the Opera and the Dolphin. And so, I mean, some things about this do work fine. Uh, it's just sort of hit or miss when it comes to Android apps. So I was trying to install a bunch of like reading apps. I couldn't get Google Play to install. I couldn't get Aldeco to install. I couldn't get pretty much anything to install. But I'm not sure if that's because it won't install now or just because of some error that I'm having. Because, like I said, I can't get any apps to install now. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, we've also got the ES File Explorer on here, which makes it easy to find your, uh, you know, folders and find your content on your device. So it's a lot different than the regular Kobo device, that's for sure. I mean, it does have some pluses, but it's definitely for the tech savvy because you're going to encounter some problems. Uh, I got Overdrive loaded on here. I mean, I haven't tried to use it, so I don't know exactly how well it works because I don't feel like, you know, getting a library book right now. So let's go ahead and show you a couple other things here. I have the Kobo app installed. It seems to work okay. Um, but I don't know why you would use it. I mean, if you got the dual boot on here, you would just go ahead and boot up your Kobo operating system. It's going to run a lot smoother than the Android version and the transitions are going to be a lot smoother, obviously, and it's going to be a lot faster to load because this does not exactly speedy right here. Alright, so, well, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up this video right here because, you know, I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at what uh, Android looks like on the Kobo or HD here with this dual boot hack is definitely a little bit different than the regular hack uh, just visually with the different launcher and we've got the uh, you know the uh, button savior up here so I uh, just want to give you a look at that like I said I wouldn't recommend installing this unless you're really Android tech savvy and you know what you're doing because um, there are a lot of problems and a lot of freeze ups a lot of issues with installing apps Okay, so I'm going to wrap up this video right here. I have the how-to tutorial. If you want to actually install this on your device, 
uh, you just install it on another memory card and you can put it in and, and then do the dual boot, dual boot method. So uh, check out theevilcreator.com if you want more information and uh, thank you for watching.